but tonight we want to talk to you about three great losses. And uh, the first one is a man named Esau. Uh, the second one is a man named Saul, the enormous King Saul. And then the last one is a man named Judas. And so as we get into these stories and share these scriptures with you, I trust that will be a source of encouragement to you. And uh, we want to go ahead and look at the first one. And then we'll go back and forth somewhat. But in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 16 and 17, it tells us about this man named Esau. And as we look at Esau, he had some great opportunities before him. That's what we want to share with you. Some of the things that he could have done. And uh, so as we look here, I, I trust that uh, you'll look at Esau and that you'll be able to identify with him. And hopefully, because you can identify with him, you won't have the losses that he lost. Because he lost some very valuable things. And uh, I guess in one sense, if you talk about monetarily wise, he, he probably lost billions, maybe trillions of dollars because of some bad decisions that he made. I don't know if y'all will lose billions or millions of dollars or not, but uh, making the right decision makes a big difference, uh, not just financially, but so many other ways. So it says this in Hebrews chapter 12, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright, for ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he saw it carefully with tears. And so, basically, God makes it very clear that we need to make the right decision in the very beginning. When we have an opportunity to make a decision, let's make the one that God would want us to make, so that God can bless us. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be cursed by God. And I'll put it to you this way. God does not want to curse anybody in this building today. He's done everything he can to bless you. And again, the fact that we have the hope of going to heaven is so fantastic. And the fact that everyone and anyone in here can go to heaven if they make the right choice. And that's the choice that God has set before them. So as we look at these three losses, the first thing that we see when we think of these, so again, I think of the lost opportunities that he had. He could have been such a tremendous witness for God. My wife and I, when we uh, went to Israel, when we were down in that part of the world, in the Middle East, we went to a place called Petra. And uh, many of you have seen Petra, uh, and, and yet you didn't realize you saw it. it was in a famous movie. Anybody remember the uh, the Lost Crusade? The uh, Raiders of the Lost, of the Lost Ark? Of the lost what? Of the, okay, the last crusade. It, anyhow, in this particular scene, there's a knight that's like seven, eight hundred years old. And Indiana Jones goes into it, and there's a chalice in it that, that Jesus had blessed. And anybody drunk from it, they can be healed of any disease and even brought back to life. Supposedly, I mean, that's the way the Indiana Jones show goes. And Martha and I have been in that very place. Uh, the night wasn't around, so I don't know if he was out uh, for the night or if he was out for the day. But anyhow, we didn't see him. But we got to go into that place that is a very, very real place. And you remember the last scene when they're riding off? And uh, they're riding off into the sunset and everything? I got to do that very thing there on an Arabian horse. I got to literally, they said, do Texacon? And I said, yes, I'm a Texacon. And he said, Texicans, uh, they know horses, they, they, they know how to ride. And I didn't tell him any different. I said, yeah, you're right. And he said, you give me one dollar, I let you ride free. Uh, one dollar ride free. I, anyhow, I gave him one dollar so I could ride free. But uh, he had nothing but a, he had a dog chain on that thing. And, you know, it was like that he was leading me on a dog or whatever. And so when he let go, I just took off as I was flying through. Uh, it was pretty exciting as I was passing everybody because everybody else was being laid on that dog leash. And so as I'm passing them, there's probably about uh, 90 of us there. And so finally I'm way off in the front and everything, and, and I could hear him yelling, Bedouin, Bedouin, Bedouin. And in uh, Arabic, that means uh, a good horse rider, best horse rider. The Bedouins are considered the best horse riders in the world, maybe next to Apaches, but anyhow, 
depending on where you're at, they're considered the best writers in the world. And so I was so thrilled to hear him call me Bedlin, Bedlin. Mm. Y'all didn't know your pastor was such a good horse rider, did you? But anyhow, I can picture how, you know, I, I probably looked like Indiana Jones. Of course, that was before they made the movie. But anyhow, uh, I had on my coat. My coat was flapping in the wind as I'm flying through on that horse. And that Arabian horse is just flying. And finally, I get in, and the rest of the people start trickling in. And my wife was in a Jeep. And I finally, when her Jeep got in, left it with me, honey, you know. When the Jeep finally got in, I said, Martha, did you hear what everybody was calling me? She looked at me real funny, like, to, what do you mean? I said, you didn't hear what they were calling me? She said, yeah, I heard. I said, Mom, Bedouins are the best writers in the whole world, and they were identifying with the Bedouins. She said, that's not what they were saying. They were saying, big one, big one, big one. <laughs> so anyhow, it was a way of saying, fat guy, a little horse, you know what <laughs> Now, don't repeat that, all right? But that, that's what happened to me. So this is in my mind. The reason I'm bringing all this up is, well, why are you bringing all this up? I'm glad you asked that question. Because the city of Edom was Esau's city. He was the one that founded that city. And it was amazing how it was built. It was like the, the 40 Thieves of Ababa. Uh, you've heard the story of the 40 Thieves. This was a place that people totally disappeared into this mountain. And people that went into the mountain never came back out, at least not alive. Pretty exciting place. And uh, anyhow, we got to go in that place. The first thing that happened when we entered into that place, all of a sudden we heard, <laughs> and I thought, man, I thought any minute there was going to be a T-Rex coming around the corner to get my wife. And I was with her. <laughs> uh, and and you know, right? it, it was a camel. But, but the camel just, he made this weird noise. Have you ever heard camel before? No. No? Okay, Levi has. Okay. They make the weird noise, but when they're inside a, a, a thing that's full of caves and all sorts of other things, I mean, it just, it was, it was, it was spooky. I get spooky just thinking about hearing that sound again, and yet I know what it was. At the time, I wasn't quite sure. But anyhow, uh, so I'm strained from my story. But Esau... His brother was a man named Jacob, who was later blessed by God, and his name was changed to Israel. Israel is one of the most powerful countries on the face of the earth today. And when I say it, it's a small country, but it's amazing the capabilities that they have. It, uh, we often then give them weapons, the United States does, and they take our weapons and they make them three or four times better than what we had, and we gave them the best that we had. Wow. Uh, amazing some of the things that they're capable of doing. But Edom, he was the firstborn. Now he was twin to his brother. They didn't look anything alike, but they were twins. And so he was to have the family blessing because he was the first one born in the family. And that's a tremendous blessing to have that. But we see several things that happened. He had an opportunity to become a tremendous witness. He had the opportunity for Jesus Christ to come through his lineage. Wow, that would be something, wouldn't it? To be the great, great grandfather to Jesus Christ. But also, he had an opportunity to serve God in a unique way. And uh, so much more that he could have had than just to please the city of Edom. He could have had the whole country of Israel with go on and on, all the blessings that would have come with it. But anyhow, he chose something totally different than what was best for him. And so again, how many of you can think back in your mind and in your heart, maybe, of a bad decision that you made? Can you think of a bad decision that if you could go back and change it, you would right now? Have your parents ever made a bad decision? Okay, then let me turn around a little bit. Have you ever made a good decision? you never made a good decision. And I think coming to church tonight was a good decision. Okay. <laughs> I think that was a good decision. Okay, come on now. Wake up now. But I think it was a good decision to come to church. And maybe you'll know a little bit more here in a, in a second or two as we get into our message. But simply, we see the lost opportunities of this man named Esau. And how much more he could have been blessed. Now, something else unique about him. According to what we're reading in the scriptures, y'all ready for this? He was a redhead. We don't even have any redheads around here, do we? Okay, he was a redhead. But anyhow, I thought that was kind of interesting. But something else, we find another man. This man was very, very unique. He honestly stood out in any crowd. 
His name was Saul. Saul was made the first king of Israel, and it tells us that he was head and shoulders taller than anyone else in the kingdom. Right, so if you can imagine that, I mean, wow, he was a giant among men. And I think maybe, you ever heard the term, okay, I want a king-sized drink. You ever heard that? Or I want a king-sized order of fries. It, it, in that nature, I said, I got a king size bed. And so I said, well, I got a queen size bed. You know? <laughs> and so I said, well, I have a full bed. But what I'm saying is we use the term king size because it means big, okay? Now, where I come from, we go Texas size. Okay, but anyhow. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is they would say king size. And I think it's because, for one reason, Saul was so much taller than anyone else in his kingdom. And uh, he would have been the most logical one to fight against Goliath, too, by the way. But simply we see that God blessed him with, you ready? Not only was he taller than anyone else, and he could have made part of the basketball dream team, but he also was better looking than anybody else. So not only was he tall, but he was good looking. And uh, you saw him go, wow, that guy, he's good looking. And, and not only would you look at him that way, now your guys wouldn't look at him that way, but your girls would, you know, maybe, and just say, man, he's a real hunk. Uh, don't use that word still. Anyhow, it meant that he was really strong, and uh, that he was intelligent, had a real sharpness to him and everything else, and God made him the first king. And so he was anointed by God's priest, a man named Samuel, who was one of the greatest men we have any record of in the Bible. And Samuel made a lot of good decisions in his life, and as a result, he was blessed in a wonderful way. But here we see that Saul was anointed to become king, and he became king for the space of 40 years. And during that time, he had so many special blessings on him. And again, humanly speaking, the Messiah could have come through him in one sense because he was the king. And we know that, that Jesus was not only the king, or if you please, of the king's seed, but he also was, a, if you please, had the, the priestly hood that sent him also. And he had several things that we look at Jesus. And of course, he was God himself. But as we look at all these things, we see that Saul was anointed by God's man. That means he was chosen for a special service. And as I look out here, I can't help but think that maybe some of y'all could have that same calling. Uh, now, Levi, sometimes he gets to give his testimony, and he's going to be preaching uh, this next week at a youth rather than Not next week, okay. okay. Saturday, he's going to be preaching a youth meeting over in Knox. I don't know if they'll be interested in that. But anyhow, as he preaches in that meeting, he'll share with them when he got his call. And I, I hope I've got it right, but he was out on a plow. Am I right? At, at Bill Fisher's place, that's a hog farm, and out there while he was plowing, he got to thinking about the Lord, and I think basically, isn't that where you kind of surrendered to the Lord? Was that on the tractor? Uh oh, he's thinking, I was going to rub all his hair off. <laughs> he's really got hair, he just got shaved off, that's all. Okay, but anyhow, he, if you please, that's where he saw God's will for his life. And as he sought God's will for his life, God was able to bless him. And you know what? I think if he hadn't surrendered to the Lord, you ready? He wouldn't have his beautiful wife. And he wouldn't have those three beautiful kids. And he wouldn't have such a wonderful father. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I could pass it up. Wouldn't have the best brother in the world, right, Caleb? Uh, but all that said, what I'm trying to say is he was blessed because he made a right decision when he was young. And God blessed them for it. And so we could go on and on, but what I'm trying to say is, sometimes people get a call from God and they know God wants them to do something for them. And I appreciate the young people that have been so active in bringing others to church. Uh, some of y'all even had some parents here last week. Wasn't that exciting? Last Sunday, seeing some of the parents here. And, uh, Matt, I was thrilled getting to meet your folks back there. And uh, that was a real blessing. But what I'm saying, that, that's exciting. And, and Kimmy, and I hope we get your mom here again soon. Oh, gee, I miss your grandma too so much. But anyhow, uh, and then of course, uh, Jacob and uh, uh, Apple. I'm hoping we'll get your parents back again soon. But anyhow, it's, it's such a blessing. And Leah, she's always got her parents here. <laughs> Even her grandparents. But what am I I'm trying to say? I'm trying to say that God can use you to help others to find Jesus. And God can use you so that you can be blessed by God in a special way. Have God's blessing, just like Saul did for a time. And then we know something else, the last one. Perhaps the saddest situation of all was a man named Judas. 
And as we just look at Judas, it tells us in Matthew uh, chapter 27, verse 5, it says this, And he, that's Judas, cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Now, folks, isn't it interesting that he was hanging around the religious group of that day? They uh, gave him 30 pieces of silver to sell Jesus to him. And he sold Jesus to him like he was a slave. Wow. How sad. He got to see Jesus raise people back to life. He got to see Jesus call the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk, the lepers that had a terrible disease to be totally healed. And not only that, he, he was there when the, the servant from the high priest came and took a sword and swung, uh, or excuse me, when Peter swung his sword at the high priest, and the high priest, the, if you please, his servant, his soldier, lowered his head, and when he did, he chopped off his ear. Now, he was trying to chop off his head, Peter was, but he was a fisherman, he wasn't much of a swordsman. And so when that happened, what did Jesus do? He reached down and picked up the ear from off the ground and stuck it back on his head. And he didn't use gorilla glue either. Isn't that amazing? I mean, just stuck it right back on the side of his head. Like I said, I, I'm so disappointed. I think if, if Peter had been a little bit better and chopped his head off, that Jesus would have put his head back on too. But anyhow, what I'm saying, Jesus was amazing. And that was one of the last miracles that Judas saw but instead of Jesus saying, Judas saying, Jesus, I, I, I want to be your father, and I'll follow you. You are definitely the son of God. You're definitely more than a mere man. I, I, I want you to be my master forever. He had that choice. And not only that, when he came to Jesus to sell him out, Jesus said, friend, friend. Jesus came alive, and he called this traitor friend. So can you see these three losses? And again, I think all of us have been to walk over when we talk about having some losses. And uh, we've all gone through some things that have hurt us. But as we look on, we see their eternal losses. All three of these men, it looks like it's very likely that they may be in hell right now. Uh, I'd like to think that maybe Esau somewhere it said he tried to repent, but he didn't fully try to repent according to what we read in the scriptures. And, and I want to believe that Saul was saved, but yet when you look at his life, there wasn't much to show for it if he was saved. And, and then, of course, when we look at Judas, Jesus made it very clear that he went to his appointed place. So he knew that he was not going to go to heaven. So if we look at these three characters again. Esau, the son of Isaac. He was a child of one of the greatest men that has ever lived. Abraham, have any of you ever sung the song, uh, song of Father Abraham? Father Abraham had many sons, many sons of Father Abraham. Y'all ever sung that song? I never heard it. Oh, get to real fast. Like, okay. Father Abraham had many sons, many sons had Father Abraham. You are one of them, and so am I. So let's just serve the Lord. Hey, it looks like that. Do you recognize it? I know, I know, uh, this is. Okay. I don't know if any of them were in there with you. Okay, and what it refers to is that physically we may not be related to Abraham, but spiritually we're related because we accepted Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ would have been his, uh, wow, like 28 uh, G grandson, something to that effect. And so anyhow, as we, we look at that, uh, we find that Esau could have had all those privileges that I was talking about earlier, and we have this privilege because we are the children of God. Isn't it great that we, we read the scriptures? And again, John chapter 1 and verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. The word used for sons is the word technon, which could refer to the children, if you please, of God. But uh, how many times do we think of ourselves as a child of God? And if we're saved, we are a child of God. What tremendous honor and privilege that is to be a child of the God, of our God, if you please, the God, with all the authority that he has. And then I look at something else. I look at Saul, the first king of Israel. And you ready? The Bible says that you and I are a prince, are a princess with God. 
because we trusted Jesus Christ as our Savior. And as a result, we were adopted into the family of God, even though we're blood-related because of the blood of Christ. His blood is what cleanses us from all our sins. So what a tremendous thought to think that we belong to royalty in that sense. And again, that we have all the privileges and authority that comes from being a prince or a princess, if you please. Judas, we see, was a disciple of Christ. And wouldn't it be exciting to have walked with Christ to witness all the great miracles that he did? I mean, I don't know about you, but wouldn't it have been kind of exciting to see him walking on the water, <laughs> you know? Or, or taking the bread and blessing the bread, and the bread multiplied, and the fishes multiplied, and he was able to fill, feed a multitude with a snack? Wow. And they ate all that they could eat. And there was still 12 baskets left over. Wasn't that been exciting to see that? And then for Jesus to walk out in the middle of a storm, I mean, just going every which way, and he's walking on the water too. And as he walks out on there, he says, be still. And all the clouds and the rain and the water, everything just stopped. It was still. That would have been neat. So Judas saw all these things, and yet we see how he was willing to betray and sell Jesus out. We see these, uh, these three privileges that they had. And uh, when we look at the privileges, again, the birthright, the, the Abrahamic covenant, God blessed the, the Jewish people, and uh, God has taken care of them over and over and over again through the centuries, through the millenniums. And again, uh, God has made very clear that they're his special people. And even though many times they have failed and they have done wrong, God always has a way of, please bring them back, and he still loves them in spite of all the things that they've gone through because of their own sins. So again, we have a wonderful privilege because we're going to heaven because of what Jesus has done for us. Uh, I don't deserve heaven, but neither do you. But I'm going to heaven because of what Jesus did for me. And so, again, I have a special promise that's been made between God and me, if you please, when I receive Jesus, and the same is true of every one of you. We see the kingship and the kingdom. Our kingdom is not of this world. I'm so glad for that. Our kingdom is beyond this world. It's beyond our wildest imagination. It's in a place so far from here that we can never measure the distance. And again, it's a place that we can be at in the twinkling of an eye, says Miss Scriptures. Do you realize what a twinkling is? It's not a blinking of the eyes. It's how much time it takes for the light to reflect back from your eye. That's pretty fast, folks, okay? Uh, light and speed that we can travel from this earth to our heavenly home. And then we see the apostleship, again, that Judas had. And again, his apostleship, and he had the hope of heaven because he literally kissed the door to heaven and yet did not go to heaven because of his sin. So what a tragedy. And again, I, I think as I think of every one of us, how many of us have an opportunity to serve the Lord and to do something for God right now, and yet we've chosen to do our own thing instead of doing what God would have us to do. Uh, again, I, I think of the transgression. Esau sold his birthright. And how many of us have been guilty of selling out, following the world, following our friends, instead of following Jesus and what he has for us? And uh, how sad that is. Saul disobeyed and rebelled against God. He refused to accept God's plan for his life. And as a result, God basically washed his hands of Saul. How sad. Judas sold out Christ, and yet I wonder how many times we've sold Jesus out for a whole lot less than 30 pieces of silver. How many times have we been guilty of betraying Jesus because we just didn't want anybody else to know that Jesus was in our heart, that Jesus was in our life, that we were a church coin person, that we were a Christian, and so we just didn't let anybody else know what our relationship was with the Lord. And so again, guilty of doing the same thing that Judas did himself. And then when I think of Esau, how he might have been in the Messianic line, that means how he could have been, you ready? He could have been a hero of the faith. But instead he became a heel. Do you all use that word, heel? H-E-E-L. And, and heel means a bum, okay? <laughs> For lack of a better description. And that's what he became, a bum, instead of becoming a hero of the faith. When I think of Saul, that he could have died in peace, 
and how he could have the blessing of the kingdom going from one son to another son. But instead, we find that he, of all things, he died in shame because he refused to accept God's plan for his life. Wow, what a tragedy. God had a wonderful plan for his life. And then Judas might have become a great apostle. But instead, he listened to the religious crowd of his day, and he sold Jesus out. He realized it was the religious crowd. It was the church people that hung Jesus on the cross, that tortured Jesus. And Judas sold out too. Wow. Last thought. Three fates that were encountered. Esau wept and found no repentance. And, and here's the thing. Sometimes, maybe we come to church because it's convenient. Maybe we come to church because our friends are coming to church. Maybe you come to church because, uh, I don't know, maybe Jared promised to bake you a cake. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Maybe they, uh, Sean promised to buy you all pizzas or something. Like but what I'm saying is, uh, you know, and that's good. And a lot of times they get your friends to come and visit when there's something special like that going on, okay? But when you come, it's not convenient. You've had a hard day at work, I mean, at school. And maybe you had some problems with your teachers, and they didn't see everything the way you saw it, you know? And maybe some of your teachers were just totally unreasonable, and maybe some of you had that, that really, really bad bus strike. Okay, not my wife. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm saying, we all have our bad days. Maybe your friend gets upset with you. Maybe your dog bites you on the way to school. I don't know, but what I'm saying is you can have all sorts of bad things happen to you. But what I'm saying is that no matter what happens to you, you know how to praise God and thank God. Say, Lord, I, I don't know why my dog bit me, uh, but you know why. And Lord, I, I know you had a reason for it. And, and I'm not just trying to be silly, but what I'm saying is sometimes dumb things happen, don't they? And it doesn't make sense. But can you trust God when it seems dumb? Folks, we can trust God when things seem dumb. We can trust God when things seem really good, too. And then we know something else. That was Esau we were talking about. But Saul's son sat behind a storm clouds. And uh, he made one bad decision after another after another. Another. God kept giving them opportunities to make things right, but he continued to do the wrong thing. He had a son that was fantastic. His name was Jonathan. He was one of the most godly, most courageous young men that you find in the Bible anywhere. I mean, he was just an amazing guy. Him and his bodyguard took on a whole troop of 2,000 soldiers, just two of them, in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And not only that, they climbed the mountain, climbed the cliff, they get to them while they waited for them to come. Hey, y'all just come on up, and we'll let you get up here, and then, then we'll go ahead and kill you then. But we won't kill you until you get up here with us. In the space of about an acre, they had already killed over 20, just, just like that. And folks, they didn't have a whole lot of weapons. But God gave him tremendous victory. And as a result of that victory, all of Israel uh, was able to win a, a tremendous victory because of this man's faith. That was Saul's son. So somewhere in his past, he was bringing his kids up right. But he turned his back on God and became so opposite of what God wanted him to be. And then the last man again, Judas, he died... <laughs> He died a suicidal death. And folks, let me point out, Saul did too. Saul took his own life. How sad. And sometimes folks were guilty of doing the same thing. Doing a spiritual suicide or emotional suicide. And what a tragedy that some actually go through a physical suicide. So again, we find that God wants to help us. Satan wants you to end it all. He don't want you to do anything for God. And he'll trick you into doing the wrong thing, into doing stupid things. He'll tell you it's stupid to be a Christian. It's stupid to listen to a preacher. It's stupid to listen to the Bible. It's, <laughs> he'll tell you all those type of things. But look at those that have listened to God's word. And look at what they have. See how God has blessed them. That's what we want. We want you to be blessed.
Every one of you know somebody that's really messed up. And I, I'm not going to give any names, but, you know, simply, some of you may have seen some parents really mess up bad. Maybe some of you have seen some school teachers mess up. Maybe some of you have seen some of your friends really, really mess up. But what I'm saying is, Jesus Christ wants to help you. And he wants to bless you. So, we all have some great opportunities. The choice is yours to make. God is not going to force you to do right. God wants you to do right. But he gives you the ability to choose to do right or to do wrong. So again, it's up to you. Are you going to follow the example of God's people? Or the ones that did right? <laughs> are you going to follow the bad examples that were set by God's people? Wow. How sad. But yet, how exciting. It's up to you, the decision you make right now. I, I think of all the decisions that I could have made that would have put me in the wrong direction. Um, I feel like I've made the decisions that I wanted to. Uh, I probably got killed in Vietnam. And how different things would have been. There wouldn't be a Levi here, Caleb here. There, there wouldn't be a Jen here either. <laughs> there, there wouldn't be these three grandsons and all the others. If I made the decisions that I wanted to make and followed them through. But I'm so glad I listened to God. I'm so glad I did. Because it affected so many other people. And so what I'm saying, that's where you're at right now. Make right decisions, even though it may seem like a little thing right now. Make the decisions that God would have you to make. Okay? Does God want you in church? Yeah. Does God want you to read the Bible? Yes. Does God want you to tell others about Him? Yes. Does God want you not to cuss? No, He don't want you to cuss Him. Does God want you to learn good things about Him? Yes, He does. So all those things, those are pretty simple, aren't they? Right now, we want to go ahead and ask you to stand to your feet to begin our invitation. Lord, thank you for this time. We can study your word, and we pray that you help us not to make the mistakes that Esau made, the mistakes that Saul made, the mistakes that Judas made. But Lord, help us that when we have that decision to make, when we come to that fork in the road, that we'll make the wise decision and do what you would have us to do realizing that even though it may seem like we're really sacrificing at that time, help us to see the other side and how that you can bless us when we do that which is right. Thank you again for loving us. Thank you for these examples. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Folks, God bless you. You'll have a great day, okay?